Hey, how's it going everybody? I decided to do a video and this is something new I'm trying out. It's uh, gonna look a lot like the Khan Academy videos um, just because it's an easy format to deal with. Uh, I'm just doing this on paint so don't expect anything too fancy and I'm using one of these writing boards that I stole from work. So with that said, all right, radius and interval of convergence. Uh, you've also got an assignment due next Thursday and class isn't until next Wednesday, so, well, here is just some extra help. Uh, so in class, we talked about this idea of the interval of convergence. And basically, you have a series, and you have the value x in there, and it's just the values of x where your series will converge. Uh, so we dealt with a very simple example. Uh, 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the series from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. Right, and this is only valid, and in fact, your series will only converge if x is between negative 1 and 1. Right, so that's where your series converges. So your interval of convergence is from negative 1 to 1. It's the same thing. Uh, you can take a look at uh, another example down here, and you'll get the same uh, type of calculation that you'll be doing. Uh, the values are different, but that's okay. So the radius of convergence is exactly half the length of the interval of convergence. Right, so here the interval of convergence is 2. All right, the length of it is 2. So you divide it by 2, so it's 1. Uh, you can go back to my previous slide where I talk about, uh, and here, why don't I just do that right now? I talk about what a circle is in 1D. Then it's kind of like, let's say if it was from negative 1 to 1, well, the radius is just one, right? It's your midpoint to the edge of your um, the edge of your interval. It's that length would be the radius. Uh, but this part is not as important as actually being able to calculate it and being able to produce the correct answer. So let's take a look at a simple example. We have the sum of n factorial times n to the, uh, times x to the n. So you can plug in values like x is equal to two, right? So I'm going to plug in a value here, n equals 1, 2 infinity, n factorial of 2 to the n. And hopefully you remember from the very first test that I ever taught you, uh, that was the divergence test, and that one says that if whatever you're adding, right, these terms that we're adding, if they don't eventually go to zero, then your series has to convert, uh, has to diverge. That's why it's called the divergence test, has to diverge. Uh, so what happens here as n gets really, really big? Well, we know n factorial goes to infinity, and we know 2 to the n goes to infinity. So infinity times infinity, well, just gives me a bigger infinity. So the whole point is, this is not going to converge. No way. So we already know for values like 2, 5, 100, it's not going to converge. Well, what if we take a look at something we might be kind of curious about, but don't know for sure? So let's say 1 -third. And if you're already familiar with this concept, you may be able to jump ahead to the answer already, but let's say we're seeing this almost for the first time, right? So if I plug in x to be one third, right? x to be one third, then I would just get three to the n on the bottom, right? This is just the exact same thing as n factorial times one over three to the n, right? I break the n in, and then that's how I get three n on the bottom. All right. So the question is, does this converge? And you might think, oh, if n gets really, really big, the top is infinity, the bottom is infinity, we're not really sure. And that's completely fair. But if you remember from a week or two ago when I gave you that list of the types of functions, we had uh, polynomials, logarithms, factorials, and exponentials, uh, definitely not in that order. Um, but if you refer to that list, then we know factorials dominate exponentials. So what does that mean? Factorials will go to infinity much faster than an exponential will. So what does that tell us? As n gets really, really big, the top gets way bigger than the bottom. So if the top is really, really big compared to the bottom, then, well, your series will go to infinity because the individual terms you're adding are going to infinity. Right? In fact, you could write this out if n is... I don't know, say 100, then you'd have 100 times 99 times 98 all the way down to 1, 
and then you would just have a bunch of threes, right? Like you would have three multiplied by three a hundred times, and you'll be able to see that the top goes to infinity much, much faster than the bottom. So anyway, it turns out, even for x equal to one-third, this is not going to converge. So you might be thinking, oh, there's no values it converges for. Well, uh, that's almost the case, except for zero, right? You take a look at x equals to zero, and we're left with the sum as n equals one to infinity of n factorial times zero to the n. Of course, n here starts at one, so one factorial times zero to the one, that's just zero. And if I just keep on doing this forever, this is really just the sum of zero, right? Sum of zero, and this just equals zero. Solid. So zero is a number, so in fact, for x equals zero, the series will converge to zero. All right, well, this is all fine and dandy, and we're just plugging in several numbers in for x. But this is no, not really a good way to determine what the actual range is. So let's take a look at what we can possibly do. And that's going to be taking a look at one of the tests that I taught you in the last two weeks. So what's a good test for determining uh, the convergence if you have a factorial and you have a constant to the power of n? Well, ratio test. And if you haven't looked at my list of tests and uh, how to know when, when to choose which test, please take a look. It uh, should be worthwhile. So in the ratio test, ratio, no, ratio test, we take a look at this. The absolute value of an plus one over an. And in case you're still struggling with ratio test, this is an. So I go ahead and I plug this in. Don't forget the absolute value signs, because in this case, x can be positive or negative, right? So we want to be careful and try to make sure we make everything positive, so we put an absolute value signs. And that's just the definition of the thing we use for ratio test. All right, so it's n plus 1 factorial, whatever I see for n in a n up there, I just put an n plus 1. x to the n plus 1, and on the bottom we just keep it exactly the same. n factorial x to the n. All right, some of these things will cancel, and in fact, this is n plus 1 factorial times n factorial x to the n plus 1. Oh, shoot. Nope. Sorry, it's just, uh, hang on. No, come on. So it's n plus 1 times n factorial times x to the n plus 1 over n factorial times x to the n. So this is equal to n plus 1, that quantity, times x. And remember, for ratio tests, we're interested in what happens as a limit as n goes to infinity of this ratio. And we get this. Right, so what does this equal to as n gets really, really big? Well, you might say it depends on x, and that's true. But if x is, say, 5, it's going to go to infinity. If x is negative 3 billion, it's going to go to infinity. In fact, this is always equal to infinity, provided x is not zero, right? So for x not zero. So we know as long as x is not zero, this series is going to diverge. And we know it's equal to zero if x is equal to zero. So from the ratio test, we know it converges only if x is equal to zero. So that's our radius of convergence. Uh, sorry, our interval of convergence. So interval of convergence and later on, I'm going to probably just start writing IOC. I'm still getting used to writing on this board because it's kind of uh, a little bit different than writing on paper. Uh, so x is equal to 0 would be your interval of convergence. Your radius of convergence, well, it's just the length here. And the length of a point is just 0. So 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So my radius of convergence is just 0. So this is a fairly simple example, and we use ratio tests to show what the interval of the and the radius of convergence are. So slightly harder example, um, but not by that much, is we're going to take a look at, there we go. So we have x to the n of, over n factorial. And I said in class that this is actually equal to e to the x, but 
Uh, I'll show you that in due time. So here, I can do the same thing as I did before. I can plug in different values of x. Well, I could, but I would actually be much faster just to go and take a look at this ratio and see what I get. So this ratio would give me back x to the n plus 1 on top over n plus 1 factorial over x to the n over n factorial. So you can take a couple steps and you can reduce this and do exactly what I did up there, but you end up with the absolute value of x over n plus 1. Right? You cancel the factorial somehow, you cancel the exponents, and you're left with this. So the limit as n goes to infinity of this quantity that we have above, well, ask yourself the question, does it matter what x is? Hopefully I heard you say no. Uh, so <laughs> let's say x is negative 5, x is a billion, it doesn't matter what it is, this is still going to go to 0. Right? So no matter what x is, it still converges because 0 is less than 1. Remember that's the ratio test. As long as this limit is less than 1, then your series converges. Well, that's great. That tells us what the interval of convergence is. In fact, it's any value of x. So we would say the interval of convergence, interval of convergence would be a negative infinity to x to infinity, which means, well, it converges for any value of x. The radius of convergence. This would be the length of this interval, which is infinite. Or if you just want to say it's like 2 infinity, and then you divide by 2 and you get infinity. No, not really. The point is the radius of convergence is just infinite because imagine that same circle that we had in the slides. It just goes on forever, right? It converges everywhere. So that's why we have an infinite uh, radius of convergence. All right, so hopefully this is just a quick intro to uh, the radius and the interval of convergence. Uh, you won't necessarily be only working with series that look geometric, like I do, showed you in my slides, but you would work with all sorts of different uh, series, as you'll see in your assignment. So hopefully this helps you get a little bit of insight on how to do this. Uh, you don't always use ratio test, although in a lot of the cases you can, but not always. Uh, so you may have to use other tests, and in future videos, I will show you some of those tests. Awesome. All right, see you later.